So we've spent some time talking about soil survey at the national level. Now I'd like to spend just a few minutes talking about what was going on in Saskatchewan at that same time. Uh, more specifically, uh, where and when and how did soil survey get started in Saskatchewan? It's, it's a big place, a lot of soil. How did they even know where to begin in Saskatchewan? Soil survey really got its start at the uh, conference in 1921 at Swift Current called the Better Farming Conference. And that the, the reason for the conference was there was already quite serious soil degradation. Soil drifting, as they called it in that days, and decline in fertility, they were evident. And so there was a meeting to decide how to, how to do farming better, basically. And one of the recommendations that came from that conference is, is, was that there should be a soil survey. And uh, the second recommendation, I guess, was that the soil survey should be based at the University of Saskatchewan. So from that, that's the so how the soil survey got started. Uh, Pro Professor jo Joel, who was the head of the soils department, he was the one that did a lot of the initial sort of soil survey work, some of the soil mapping. He had, he had come here, as I said earlier, I think, uh, from Michigan State University, where he had done his PhD. And he, had al he also did a lot of really, uh, really excellent, uh, you might say, uh, pedology work or soil genesis work, uh, work on the soil forming factors. And he adapted the idea of soil zones, basically, to Saskatchewan. And, and he and Professor uh, Wyatt from the University of Alberta presented a major paper at the World Soils Congress in 1927 that dealt with the, the soil zones of Western Canada. So in addition to that paper, you, know, you talked about there being a lot of soil survey work going on at that time. Were there any sort of big outcomes or products of that, of that activity? Oh yes, the, 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 actually when they first started out they really focused on relatively small projects in areas where land degradation or the agri agricultural problems were the most serious. So a lot of those of course were in the southwest and, and other ones were uh, in the southeast. Both areas were quite severely impacted by the, some of the soil, soil degradation of the early 1920s. But I think uh, along about the 1930s, they realized in order to make soil survey useful for the whole province, there had to be a soil map of the agricultural region of the province. And so by this time, uh, Dr. John Mitchell was the head of the soils department, and he and Harold Moss, uh, Harold Moss worked for Agriculture Canada. He was a federal worker. Uh, th they did a lot of the work that, uh, uh, you know, systematically going across the whole province to, to map the soils. It was a pretty general map because they covered the ground quite quickly, right? Mm -hmm. But by uh, 1944, they, then they had, um, they, they, they achieved basically, uh, uh, soils report number 12 was, 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 uh, was published in 1944, and uh, soils report number 13 was published in um, 1947. And um, soils report number 12 is especially good soil survey report. And I think for several reasons. One reason is there's a, a small number of, of, of different kinds of soil recognized, about 35 soil associations. So this is a number that, that people can sort of get their mind around. And so people could understand how, what the soils right across the province were. Uh, and of course, the report is excellent. It's well written. It, tells you a lot about the soils. It has a sort of a rating of the soils for agriculture. So I think, you know, in many ways, the soils report number 12 is just an excellent document that, that's actually served the province for about 40 years as a, as a basic soil survey uh, material, basic soil survey document. Okay. So we, we've talked a lot with the, when we were talking about the National Soil Survey as well, we talked about the 60s and 70s as being the, the, the big glory years at the national level. What was going on in Saskatchewan at that, at that same time? Well, a after finishing number 12 and 13, uh, there was a period in the late 1940s and early 1950s where the soil survey were doing a lot of special projects. The Agriculture Canada experimental farms and some of their substations and irrigation projects and work along the frontier of agriculture in the north. The line that sort of separates uh, agriculture, uh, farming from forestry, was basically uh, decided with a lot of input from the soil survey. But in 1958, they decided that basically they needed more detailed soil maps, and so basically a remapping at greater detail of the land covered by num soil report number 12 and 13 was started in 1958. And that was a project that lasted about 40, almost 50 years, but certainly it was a big, a big project that, that got going in the, in the, uh, in the, in 1958. Uh, and, and from that, uh, there was the, uh, for example, in the early 60s, the soil survey were working on the South Saskatchewan River Irrigation Project, rating land for irrigation. From that came the Rosetown Report and so forth. So there was, you know, the, the, the work sort of continued on uh, 
and, and the, some of the basic activity was in what we call the basic survey or doing the agriculture part of Saskatchewan, but there was also work. There were a great project in Prince Albert National Park. Some of our soil survey people were working in the Yukon and Northwest Territories where there was uh, important work going on related to the development of the oil industry and so forth. So there was, qu there was quite a lot of activity. Okay. Well, it seems to me then that based, just based on the stories that I've heard around the department and, and whatnot in the coffee room that the, the soil survey activity didn't really slow down here in the 80s and 90s the way you were saying it slowed down a bit in British Columbia and out east in mm -hmm. particular through the 80s and 90s. So what was, what was going on here? Why didn't it slow down the same way here? Well, I think, well, for one thing, we had strong leadership from people in the department, especially Dr. Rennie and, uh, and John Stewart and so forth that were heads of the department in those days. And a lot of the soil survey activity in Saskatchewan was supported by special programs, you might say. The National Soil, survey, uh, National soil Conservation Program uh, supported survey very, very generously for about five years. And then the Green Plan and so forth. So we had good funding through the 80s and 90s. And that was in a period there was sort of a rush on to finish this big project of mapping, which turned out to be almost half of the agriculture land in Canada, or 45% of the agricultural land in Canada. So this, this big uh, project continued through, um, uh, through the 80s and into the 90s and sort of completed in the, uh, in the late 90s. And of course, this is the information that was gathered, some of it in you know, early days, but later on with the GIS and so forth. So this is the information that is re really makes up the, uh, the basic information for, I think, one of the best sort of soil survey database and maps there is for any place in the world. I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised to, if that were the case. So from the perspective of somebody who spent you know, the majority of your life involved in soil survey and in one manner or another, what do you see as the, as the big challenge that's going to be coming over the next few years? Well, of course, it used to be that people learned how to do soil survey by more or less working as apprentices with an experienced soil survey. Summer students were hired to work with the soil survey in, in the summer, and, and they usually worked with someone that was quite experienced. That's how I learned to do soil survey, for example. And that, of course, continued very well as long as there's active soil survey. But when soil survey uh, declined, then that kind of training was no longer available for, for students and so forth. So I think the, uh, the, the trend uh, that we see here at our university of making uh, field instruction and experience in the field and so forth much more of our regular courses is, is really a, a, a good trend. Uh, the, um, the kind of courses that we have, especially in the, now in the Renewable Resource Management Program, will be excellent for, for students to learn basically how to do soil survey and how, how to do it properly and how to use some of the modern technology. And then in terms of, you know, the, there's always a, this concern that we soil surveyors haven't done a very good job of sort of uh, talking about or writing about what we've done and the knowledge about the soils, the so-called tacit knowledge, I guess, and, uh, and I think that's true, we, uh, and I'm as guilty, I guess, as anyone, but the uh, one thing about the knowledge, it was knowledge that was acquired by experience uh, rather than systematic studies or anything like that, so it didn't seem like the kind of knowledge that was easily pub published, but I think in some format it should, but I think one of the, one of the things, and of course one of the things about what we're doing here is, is it gives a chance for some of that knowledge to be, to be to be known by others, basically. And I think that's, uh, some of the changes are going to, that's what's going to happen, and that will be the, how people learn to do soil classification and soil survey in future. That's interesting. It's interesting to note how the, the history of soil surveys, particularly in Saskatchewan, is, uh, really reflects the, the uh, resource-based economy. So from the start in terms of the uh, focus in degraded agricultural lands to the irrigation suitability uh, classification and the, the Canada land inventory mapping of the forest soils and right up now to the to the increased use of, of GIS and um, the computer mapping age it seems to me that uh, there's a, there's a lot of emphasis here and a lot of potential to use this information for for resource planning uh, basically well into the future so hopefully we can continue to train more soil scientists to help uh, help us make some good uh, land use decisions here in Saskatchewan in the future Thanks.